The hi-hat is a crucial percussive element that contributes to the overall energy, momentum and feel of the groove. I have listened to tons of tracks where the hi-hat is an afterthought and sounds dead and lifeless, most likely because the producer didn't know any better. So much wasted opportunity. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to program hi-hats like a boss from this day forward, and then some. Let's do this. First, a rule of thumb. Big gaps between hi-hat hits, such as quarter notes, make the groove feel heavier and slower than it actually is. Conversely, small gaps, such as 16th notes, make the groove feel faster, lighter, and more energetic. For realistic sounding hi-hats, assign the closed and open samples to the same mute, voice, or exclusion group in your sampler. This way, both sounds can never play at the same time, just as in real life. For example, the open hi-hat tail will be cut off by a closed hat hit. This will allow you to program very intricate and interesting patterns. Set your grid to quarter notes and enter a note on every beat. This pattern will make the groove feel heavy and slower than it is, so use it with that intention. At tempos below 110 BPM, you can really feel how it slows down the beat. At very fast tempos, upward of 160 BPM, it is a great choice for a hi-hat pattern that doesn't clutter up the groove. Try an open hi-hat sample to give the groove more power. Just be aware that depending on the sample length and tempo, the open hi-hat sound may not last until the next hit. If that happens and you want it to fill up the space, then you'll need a more advanced sampler where you can set loop points. Set your grid to 8th notes and enter a note on every second line, between the beats. This pattern will make the groove feel faster than it is without using a more complex pattern. Offbeat 8th notes work great at any tempo. For additional energy, use an open hi-hat sample. And for another variation, go with one hit close and the next open. To make the hi-hat close by the next downbeat, simply program in a closed hat and reduce its velocity to zero. Set your grid to 8th notes and enter a note on every line. This pattern will inject energy and momentum to the groove. However, without any accents, it will sound robotic and drum machine-y. But that's okay if that's what you're going for. To groove harder and make it sound human, either accent the downbeat or the upbeat and slightly move the note starts earlier or later. To accent the downbeat, reduce the velocity of the upbeat, like so, and adjust to taste. Most DAWs have some kind of groove or humanized function you can use to change the note starting times randomly. In the case of my DAW, Studio One, there's a feature called Humanize, which lets you not only change the start times of notes, but also their velocity values. I'm first going to apply it to note velocities, like so. 
a little bit goes a long way. I prefer doing multiple rounds of a low percentage. I found it gives me the best results. Then we'll use it once more, but to change the start time of the notes like this. Again, multiple rounds of a little works best. If you don't have a humanized function available, you can always turn off grid snapping in your editor and move the notes manually. It's advisable to edit the notes via keyboard shortcuts instead of using your mouse because nudging the notes too much will make the groove sound out of whack and amateurish, like this. For variation, program an open hat on every offbeat or at the end of every two or four bars. Also experiment with low velocity on the closed hat so the open hat sounds accented. Set your grid to 16th and enter a note on every line, but delete the notes that overlap the snare. This way the pattern will sound human. This pattern will give energy and momentum to the groove, more so than eighths. But without any accents, it will also sound robotic and drum machine-y. Same as with eighth notes, we can improve the groove by accenting the downbeat or the upbeat and slightly moving the note starts earlier or later. First, let's edit the note start times while leaving alone the first downbeat. This is how accenting the upbeats sounds. Same as with eighth notes, you can experiment mixing up closed and open hats, like this. This is a disco beat. Sixteenth hats work great below 130 BPM and above that, be careful they don't clutter the track too much. If that's the case, switch over to eighth notes. Instead of programming the accents on the downbeats or upbeats by hand, you can use an amplitude shaper such as the paid plugin, LFO tool, or a free option like STFU or Flux Mini 2. By the way, this is just like using sidechain compression. Let's start with accenting the upbeats. We'll use STFU and adjust the default sidechain curve if needed. Then while playing the hats, we'll change the mix or intensity until we hear the downbeats lower than the upbeats. Next, let's accent the downbeats. For this, we need to flip the curve upside down, like this. Then we'll adjust the mix or intensity to taste.
Don't be lazy and use the same hi-hat pattern throughout your track. Just as your track should build up in intensity, your hats can contribute to that goal. To this effect, you could use a sparse pattern during the verse, for example 8th notes, and switch over to 16th notes during the chorus, like this. You now have the knowledge to program hi-hats like a boss. Remember, your choice of notes, accents, and timing can produce dramatic changes, so use all of this to raise the level of your productions. Experiment and have fun!